My people, if you've played Stardew Valley for a while, then by this point, you know there's a variety of secrets and other Easter eggs that Concerned Ape has put in the game. Some of these secrets take the form of cool collectibles or rare furniture pieces that you can put on your farm. I played this game for a very long time and it took me years before I even realized that some of these items exist, even though they're super easy to get. So in this video, we're gonna go over some of my favorite items that a lot of people don't know exist and how you can add them to your farm. If you guys are on YouTube pretty often, you'll see video makers talk about what percentage of their subscribers are actually subscribed to the channel. And right now, only 2% of you guys are actually subscribed. So if you've been watching my stuff and it's helpful to you, please consider subscribing because it does help me out a ton. Of course, I also stream live at twitch.tv slash unsurpassablez and I would love to have you guys over there. First up, I'll cover the new statues that came with Ginger Island and the 1.5 update, since I'd expect these to be a little bit less known. The Gorman statue depicts the frog from the cave by your Ginger Island farm and can be obtained by fishing in the cove on the southeast part of the island. It is actually kind of tough to get, so it could take a day or two of attempts before you finally pull in the present, so don't give up if you don't get it immediately. Similarly, if you make your way down the left path of the volcano out to where there used to be two golden walnuts, which I assume you already found thanks to my golden walnuts video, and fish in this area of the river, you'll get a squirrel figurine. Off of Ginger Island, there's an Iridium Crobus statue found in the water below the sewer pipe exit, but your fishing rod doesn't quite have the reach to get there. It's only through boosting your fishing level up to 15 that you'll be able to get the required distance in your cast. This can be done by making a sea foam pudding with key seasoning, which will give the dish a plus five boost instead of its typical plus four, or you only need a plus four fishing level boost if you have the master enchantment on your fishing rod. You can get this plus four boost from a normal sea foam pudding or a dish of the sea, fish stew, or lobster bisque with key seasoning. And if you need help getting key seasoning, I'd recommend watching this video. Within Pelican Town, there exists three locked boxes that contain secret statues. If you place a strange bun in the chest in Vincent's room, you'll get the Ferrogamon statue. If you place duck mayonnaise in the metal box in the saloon, you'll get another statue called Pinky Lemon. And finally, if you enter this secret area above the blacksmith and place a super cucumber into the brown box, you'll get the HMTGF statue. There's a lot of unique collectibles that can only be obtained by playing the crane game in the movie theater. The movie theater is unlocked after you complete the community center and one additional bundle, or or if you went the Jojo route, you can unlock it for 500,000 gold. Each attempt will cost you 500, and there's a 25% chance that the crane is being used by someone else when you enter the theater, and it will always be occupied after a movie. The items you can obtain rotate based on season and even year. There's a whole variety of cool prizes you can win from the crane, but I'll talk about some of the items that you can only get exclusively through this mini game. During any season, you can win the Futon Rabbit or one of the four small Junimo plushes. You can sit these on any table or you can place them directly onto the ground. During the fall, you have the chance to win either the green or purple serpent statue the same statues that are present at level 120 in the mines. And there's also my personal favorites, the Wombus and the Bobo statues. These massive collectibles can only be obtained while the film Wombus is playing, which occurs during the second summer after you unlock the theater and repeats every two summers after that. Although a few of the next pieces aren't secrets, I'd still consider them unique. The suit of armor can be purchased from the night market on the 16th of winter, as can the stone parrot. The stone frog can be bought from the night market on the 15th, and the stone owl can be bought on the 17th. Now this last item should not be confused for the stone owl that you get from the random event on your farm overnight, which leaves you with a different collectible. If you want the stone Junimo to go with your set from the night market, go behind the community center, up against the wood fence, and hit the hidden statue with a tool like a pickaxe. Secret Note 14 reveals the hint for finding this statue, but you do not need to first find the note in order to obtain it. However, you do need to find Secret Note 19 before getting its treasure, which is the solid gold Lewis statue hidden behind his house. When standing up against the back of the truck here, walk all the way to the left, then down, and then right click to bring the item into your inventory. Don't leave this guy around town though, or else you'll be left with a displeased Lewis. And when a home truly be a home without a Joja Cola soda machine right in the bedroom, if you sold your soul to capitalism and turn the community center into a Joja warehouse, you instead purchase the bundle upgrades with straight gold using the Joja community development form. Upon the completion of this form, you'll be sent the soda machine as a thank you for your efforts. If instead you were a decent human being and completed the community center as intended, you'll be gifted the Stardew Hero Trophy. Following the theme of weird things to keep in the bedroom are the arcade systems for Junimo Kart and Journey of the Prairie King. When you beat the final level of Journey of the Prairie King or the progress mode in Junimo Kart, you'll be sent a playable system in the mail the next day from the developers. But honestly, just beating either of these games on their own is enough of an accomplishment to prove your superiority that these other awards seem a bit redundant. And to close us out, I'll cover some of the more luxurious pieces you can pick up on your farm. You can purchase the Statue of Endless Fortune from this NPC in the casino for a whopping 1 million gold. Every day it has an equal chance of producing a diamond, an iridium bar, an omni geode, or a gold bar, but on a villager's birthday it will instead produce a specific one of their loved gifts. Monetarily, this purchase will not pay for itself for around eight and a half years in game, but the convenience of having it provides some value to your farm, and it's also a pretty big flex. Mostly everyone knows about the Statue of Perfection, which produces between two and eight pieces of iridium ore every day, but in case you don't, you get it by having all four candles lit at the end of your year two evaluation on the farm. What just came with the 1.5 update, however, is the Statue of True Perfection. It produces one prismatic shard every 
day and can only be obtained after reaching a 100% perfection rating in Key's Walnut Room. I would say that this item above all else is the coolest item to have in the game. I hope I showed you at least one cool item that you didn't know existed that you can add to your farm the next time you play. If I did, leaving a like on this video helps it do better on YouTube and I would appreciate it a ton. Remember, I do stream live at twitch.tv slash unsurpassablez and I would love to have you over there. But that's all I got for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.